Welcome to part three in our Sport Performance Pillars series. This one is gonna be all about exercise categories and exercise selection. So make sure you go back, watch part one particularly, uh, which is all about specificity and understanding specificity, how it relates to sport performance training. That's gonna really play a big role in this video and check out part two of the series, uh, which we discuss developing speed power qualities. So first, as we look at exercise categories and exercise selection, understand that sport athletes, football, MMA, BJJ, basketball, hockey, whatever it is that you train, they don't play their sport with a barbell. So I don't like to look at their exercises as you know, developing the squat, the bench, and the deadlift, or the snatch and the clean and jerk, the same way that we do for powerlifters and weightlifters. Rather, I look at movement categories and what movement patterns are important to the athlete. And virtually every athlete is gonna benefit from improving in the categories of squat, a hip hinge or hip extension, upper body press, upper body pull, some lunge type of movement, and rotational or twisting exercise. Now, what exercises within those categories are appropriate can be determined by a lot of things, uh, you know, by the athlete's preparedness levels, movement, abilities and restrictions they might have. And of course, some athletes are gonna need more of one category than the other, depending on the way that they move in their sport. So how do we go about selecting exercises to fulfill all of these categories? The first consideration needs to be, can the athlete perform the exercise well? Do they have good enough technique in the exercise that they're safe doing it, that they're not gonna get injured? So while a high bar back squat might be a great exercise you know, to develop lower body strength, if you've got an athlete who, you know, for whatever reason, they can't perform it well, it hurts their back, they're, they're round and over, all weird, and it's just a rough looking exercise, then maybe a goblet squat or a belt squat is gonna be a better option for that athlete because high bar back squatting is not a part of their sport. Rather, we're looking at strength stimulus to, you know, to give strength to the legs and that can happen so many different ways. So first look at can they perform the exercise well? From there, can they create sufficient output on the exercise? So going back to the, the first example, the goblet squat versus the high bar back squat, high bar back squat is a superior exercise because you can create a lot more output on it. You can create a lot more strength stimulus, you can teach the athlete to produce more force and that's ultimately what they are in the weight room for. So to go further with that example, an exercise like an overhead squat, a lot of people you know, love that because they think, oh, it, it demonstrates all this, all this mobility and quality of movement in it, but it's never gonna be as good of a strength stimulus as just a regular back squat. You can't load it as heavy. So keep in mind that force production is what they are in the weight room for. You know, we wanna make it translate to, you know, have transfer of training to their sporting success, but we wanna, Choose, an, uh, choose exercise that the athlete can create output for. So if you have someone who moves just as well on two different exercises, the one that they can go heavier on is probably the better option. Finally, how does it fit in the context of the bigger training plan? So how does it fit with everything else they're doing? So while high bar ass to grass back squatting is a great exercise that's gonna give a ton of strength stimulus to the legs, if you have a football player who's in training camp, hell week, whatever you want to call it, and they're doing a ton of running, a lot of conditioning, a lot of sport practice, doing high bar back squats, which is going to impose quite a you know, sufficient fatigue load on the athlete, is probably not as good of a selection as maybe a box squat is going to be at that time, or like a safety uh, squat bar box squat, where it's less stress on the shoulders, it's just an easier movement to perform, but they can still get some solid strength stimulus from it. So you need to look at everything that the athlete is doing, the whole context of their training plan, how much sport practice are they doing, how much you know, on the field speed power work are they doing, and let their weight room exercise selection reflect that. So thinking about those three categories can hopefully help you get away from the sort of simplistic thinking that like, oh, front squats are more functional than back squats, or you know, trap bar deadlift versus a regular deadlift or whatever. The, those arguments that so many strength coaches like to have about one exercise being better than another because making blanket statements like that is it's probably just, it's not true. 
some exercises are better for some athletes and some exercises are better at some times, but you need to be looking at the movement categories and then what satisfies you know, those, those three reasons. Can the athlete do the exercise safely? Can they create output so they're actually getting strength stimulus? And how does it fit within the bigger context of the training plan? So all of these exercise selection ideas are gonna go back to the concept of transfer of training. We talked about that in the specificity video, so you can go back and review it there, but quick review. It's gonna be, how is what you're doing in preparation for competition? How are those exercises affecting your sport performance? Can you objectively measure and analyze that they've increased the athlete's performance or not? So through Dr. Bondarchuk's great work, great work, he's got these exercise classifications and categories of general preparatory, special preparatory, special developmental, and finally the competition exercise. So those general exercises, different energy systems and movement patterns, you know, body weight exercises, prehab, rehab type of stuff. Special preparatory, same muscles and energy systems being used in the exercise as being used in the sport, but through different movement patterns. So this is gonna be a lot of barbell and dumbbell training is gonna fall into this category. Maximum, uh, you know, training for maximum and explosive strength and with the you know, general type of jumping drills. Special developmental exercises are gonna be mostly what we refer to as special strength exercises. And these are the same muscles and energy systems that you're using in parts of the competitive movement and they need to be overloading in some way. So things like explosive sled pushing for offensive and defense alignment, rotational throwing drills, uh, you know, different than throwing the shot put for the shot putter, and resisted jumping and sprinting drills for a basketball player. So it's hugely important that when choosing special strength exercises, that they are overloading in some way. So if it isn't requiring greater force than what, what happens on the field of play, or developing greater velocity, then why not just practice the sport more? So you need to overload those qualities in some way, one, one or the other of those qualities in some way, for it to be beneficial. So my sport background is throwing the shot put. Very, very simple way to understand this for the shot putter is you know, the collegiate and post-collegiate shot put is 16 pounds. So throwing an 18 pound shot put or a 20 pound shot put is gonna force me to produce more force while throwing a 14 pound shot put is gonna allow me to create greater velocity. Those are both overloading in some way and would be appropriate special strength exercises. You know, we could even extrapolate that further into throwing much heavier weights and a different kind of rotational twisting throws with med balls or kettlebells. Um, or to the other direction, doing explosive push-up type variations or you know, throws with like a, a shot put on a, on a wire, like a pendulum setup, like you may have seen in the Werner Gunther videos. But it's important that we're overloading the force production or the velocity, otherwise just do, you know, more regular practice for the, for the sport. So as we go about selecting special strength exercises, there are several things to keep in mind. First, we need to define your needs. Therefore, the first priority is to, to define what movements you use in your sport and which of them are the most important. It's critical to do an analysis of the sport and on an individual basis, since there can be differences between individuals based on differences in their technique, even in the same sport. So for example, linemen and football, offense linemen is gonna need different special strength exercises than quarterbacks. Tackles might need different exercises than guards. A tackle in one system, like a run heavy system, where they're putting their hand on the, on the ground 50 plays a game, is gonna need different exercises than someone in a spread, you know, passing attack system where they're mostly pass blocking. They're, they're gonna need different exercises. You need to think big picture. If you break down the sport too much, you lose the important elements that connect everything together. The closer the, mo the movements are to the sport, the more specific it is. So you wanna think about big multi-joint movements rather than small isolated parts that make up each movement. So, and a mistake here would be like taking a discus thrower and just training like the flip of, of his fingers at the, end of, at the end of the throw. It's so small that it's, it's sort of lost the purpose of a special strength exercise. So we're, we wanna think about big multi-joint movements. Looking the same doesn't mean it's the same. So not all special strength exercises are created equal. 
While you do need to focus on the big picture, you still have to make sure that the isolated parts of the movement match up correctly. For example, an exercise might look similar, but as you look at it closer, it might have a slightly different sequence of muscle movements. For example, many twisting exercises like barbell or plate twists are used to develop rotational strength for throwing athletes or swinging a bat or a club. But in the, the sporting movement, the aim is constant acceleration of that implement, whether it's shot put, javelin, hammer, discus, swinging a baseball bat, swinging a golf club. While doing exercises like barbell twists or plate twists can be really effective strength builders, they might not be actually true special strength exercises. They might not be as specific as you think because you're decelerating, using a lot of energy to decelerate the plate at the end of the movement before you change directions or to decelerate the barbell. So just because it looks similar, it might not be as high a transfer as you may have thought. Keep it simple and creative. Some of the most effective special strength exercises for throwing athletes is going to be throwing heavy implements like a kettlebell or a medicine ball. Or for a football lineman, chest pass throw and their variations are going to have very high transfer. And these are not revolutionary exercises. They're not going to look that cool on YouTube or Instagram. So you might think, well, I'll do this exercise on one leg or I'm going to add some extra jumps or a twist into it. Or I'm going to balance on a BOSU ball or, you know, attach a squ uh, belt squat and bands in five different directions to me while I do that. And that might look cool or ridiculous on Instagram, depending on your perspective. But each of those changes is going to take the exercise further away from the actual sporting movement and give it a little bit less transfer. So look at how the athlete plays their sport and make sure their special strength exercises reflect that. And I want to particularly stress that in terms of most athletes are playing their sport on a stable surface, on solid ground. Even if it's on sand, it's still very solid compared to, you know, wobble board, BOSU ball type of, uh, type of stuff. Special strength does not always mean transfer. Special strength exercises are tools to increase performance, and the theory that the more specific it is to the exercises, the more gain will come from them, uh, the more transfer that training will have to sport performance in most cases is true, but in some cases it's not. Beginners, for example, are going to get more transfer from general exercises. And this is what the pyramid of strength idea is about. So go back and read that article down at the base of the pyramid, the broadest part where there's the most, the most athletes, there's also the broadest exercise selection that's going to transfer to them. So if you're working with, you know, youth athletes, extensive jumping and sprinting drills, calisthenics, push-ups, pull-ups, back raises are going to hugely improve their performance. And it's not going to be necessary for them to use special developmental, you know, special strength exercises to improve. Well, as you get up to higher and higher level sport, maybe into professional sports, assuming the athlete has really high general qualities, then it's going to be more helpful for them to use special strength exercises to get that last bit of, you know, that last bit of transfer over to their sport performance, where, you know, taking an offensive lineman in the NFL who benches 450 pounds and getting to bench 460 pounds probably isn't going to be worth the energy. So the more varied and basic movements in the sport can be, the same will be true for the training. So even putting the same exercise in various programs can create different results. Using special strength exercises optimally in a well-designed program is going to create the most transfer and that's what we're really after. So if you want to learn more about exercise selection, exercise classification, interested in movement progressions and regressions for what different athletes may need because you might to fulfill those different exercise categories for one person that squat movement is, might be, you know, high bar, astrograss, barbell back squats but another athlete on your team or another athlete that you work with at your facility might need belt squats or front foot elevated split squats because that's the right exercise for them. Uh, my friend, Dr. Quinn Hennock at Clinical Athlete has got all kinds of great movement regression and progression strategies. Again, Dr. Anatoly Bondarchuk, Transfer of Training for Sport and Martin Bingesser's HammerMedia.com is gonna go more in depth on this information. So that was part three in our video series covering exercise selection uh, and exercise categories. 
If you haven't watched specificity and speed power development strategies yet, go back and watch those. We've still got two more videos coming your way over the next two weeks. Like the video, subscribe to the Juggernaut Training Systems YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.